scientist, are you in the mood for a random dance party? Because today we're gonna use science to make popcorn dance. I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so all you're going to need for this experiment is about two cups of water, one cup of vinegar, a couple tablespoons of baking soda, some unpopped popcorn, and food coloring because it's fun. Add our popcorn in just here comes the fun part. So we're going to add one cup of vinegar into the jar, but we're gonna add it one splash at a time. Don't add it all in at once. Splash. Splash. So the baking soda and the vinegar are going through a chemical reaction and they're starting to produce carbon dioxide gas. The carbon dioxide gas is picking up the kernels from the bottom. See those bubbles lifting them to the top? And then when they pop, the kernels fall back down and it starts over and over again, which means that they have officially entered dance mode. We're in the lab. We're going to blow up these balloons. <sighs> oh, it's science. They are going to be the perfect addition to our birthday party. So what I have here is vinegar and baking soda. Now these two things, when we combined them, they go through something called a chemical reaction, which means that they make something brand new. In this case, they're making gas. See all those bubbles? We're gonna take all of this gas and we're going to put it inside of our balloon. So now there's baking soda in here, vinegar in here, and on the count of three, we're going to combine them. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Look at it go! All of those bubbles are popping and filling up the balloon with gas. Before we get started, let's inspect our clementine. We can look, smell, and feel closely. What do you notice? You might notice that it is round, it's orange, and it has these little circles all around it. So what do you think? Sink or float? Drum roll, please! This is because of something called density. Density is basically how compact something is. See, everything around us is made up of molecules. Sometimes those molecules are really close together. That's high density because they're so compact. But if the molecules are more spread out and there's more space in between them, that's lower density because they're not as compacted. Density can help us figure out if something will sink or float. So now let's look at the clementine again. These little circles that are on the peel are tiny little air pockets that create space and make the clementine less dense than the water. So it floats. But what do you think will happen if we peel the clementine? and we're going to get it down to the smallest unit. So a single slice of citrus. Oh, <laughs> oops. So now what do you think? Sink or float? Drum roll, please. It sinks. It sunk to the bottom. Unlike the peel, this single slice doesn't have those tiny air pockets to create space. So this slice is more compact, more dense, and sinks to the bottom. Interesting. You can try this with all sorts of objects and test whether they are less dense than water or <laughs> more dense than water. I don't know about you, but I love making a wish on my birthday, but Benjamin's a penguin, so he needs a little help to blow out his candles. 
So for this experiment, we're going to use science to try to help Benjamin blow out his candles. So we'll need some vinegar and some baking soda. And when we combine those together, they make carbon dioxide gas. It's inside of those bubbles. Now, as the bubbles pop, the gas is still around this area. You just can't see it. But we can move the gas over a candle to blow it out. Now, let's see if we can make a little bit more carbon dioxide gas to blow out all four of his candles. Here comes the carbon dioxide. Ready? Three, two, one. 